Hello, everyone. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you may be today. Welcome to our program brought to you by our friends at SCNH Group. Become your organization's data superhero. Unlock the power of Oracle EPM, presented by Lee Wielden. This presentation will be recorded and will also be made available for viewing in the webinars file library on the ODTUG website. Questions are welcome at any time during the presentation. Simply chat them in the questions box and Lee and Nick will address them at the conclusion. With that, I will turn it over to our presenter. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Sydney. Um, so uh, just really quick, uh, my name is Lee Wilden and um, I have with me uh, the director of our data and analytics practice, Nick Scott. Um, we are going to spend about 45 minutes of your time today talking through how we've been able to transform some great um, data-driven solutions um, and extracting Oracle EPM um, into powerful business intelligence tools like Power BI and Tableau and talk through some of the challenges we found uh, with our clients and how we were able to resolve them. So as we move forward to the next slide, this is just an overview of the agenda we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, we're going to just talk a little bit about SCNH Group as a firm. Then we're going to move to the business challenges that we've discovered with our clients um, in terms of how you can extract vital data sets that support a lot of hierarchical information throughout your organization and how you can blend it with other data sets within your organization. We're going to talk through some uh, great ways we found uh, to extract both metadata and data out of the EPM tools, how you structure your data, and different design patterns that we've encountered out in the wild that we've recommended to our clients. And then lastly, we're going to talk about a BI tool deep dive. We're actually going to show you a uh, implementation we did with one of our clients um, within our uh, Power BI workspace environment. We built an app. And we're going to show you some really cool um, interactive visualizations that we were able to deliver to clients. So without further ado, Nick's going to kick us off about our group and um, kind of give a plug about some of the um, great solutions we've been able to provide to our clients. And then I'm going to take over and talk through the business challenge and walk you through the rest of our implementation strategies for our clients. So I'll hand it over to you, Nick. Awesome, perfect. So we just do some quick intros. Lee did it nicely there. Uh, my name is Nick Scott. I'm the director of data analytics and, and also our Oracle EPM practice. So I've been working with the, the Oracle Hyperion stack for about 14 years now. And about three years ago, we did stand up the, a data analytics practice that's focused on helping finance and accounting teams get data out of these great solutions and into their organizational reporting tools. So happy to be here today alongside the, uh, the star of the show, which is Lee. Just real quick about SCNH, we'll keep this to a minimum. So we are a, a management consulting and CPA firm focused on, on helping folks with finance transformation initiatives, uh, really in the, the space of the Oracle EPM style tools to help bring consolidation data and budgeting forecasting together. Uh, and then also for transformational initiatives around enterprise data and reporting. Uh, we, we have a number of different services that kind of covers the gamut there. So I named that right around the Oracle EPM stack and then the, the tools that we're familiar with here for, for visualization reporting, do a lot of enterprise data warehousing work, again, targeted mainly in the finance and accounting sector to help those, those teams kind of normalize the data that comes out of their ERPs and EPM solutions and make that more available throughout the organization. Across a number of different clients and uh, and industries here, so we, we don't specify in specific industries, but we do have a niche in the government contracting business, which you'll see a, a good bit of what the, the client solution that Lee's gonna show today uh, was for a large government contractor that had a lot of data complexities, uh, but really do service companies are all across all industries, which is exciting. Cool. Awesome, well, thanks, Nick. Um, so for the bulk of this presentation, what we want to talk through is some of the business challenges we've experienced with our clients um, and how we were able to work with them to resolve it and how you might also be able to become a data superhero within your organization um, to be able to extract some of these great uh, data sets out of your Oracle EPM tools and then blend it with other operational data sets throughout your organization. 
So we have a little slide here that just talks about kind of unlocking your organizational data strengths. Um, so, you know, we've seen with our groups and, and the clients that we serve that there's a lot of challenges with uh, what we call cross-system enterprise data blending. We see that, you know, your data is within all of these different siloed areas, whether it be, you know, your production manufacturing data sets, where, whether it be your operational sort of ERP style data sets, um, whether it be, you know, your general ledger style or your sales driven data sets. And being able to blend that with an Oracle cloud tool, oftentimes what we see is this barrier here that makes it really difficult. You know, you're struggling with kind of how to extract data from APIs, how to then land it in an area that then you can pick up and sort of blend it with other data sets that sit everywhere. Um, most applications, as you see today within organizations, they choose for a cloud hosted um, application as a service style implementation. So there's just a lot of data everywhere in different pockets without your organization. And so what we're gonna talk through with you is some of the challenges we've seen specifically with the Oracle Cloud EPM suite and how we've been able to extrapolate on important data sets that walk through you know, and, and blend um, important metrics without, throughout your organization and then be able to uh, build even more impactful data-driven insights from there. So, you know, a couple of things too that, you know, we talk about, obviously it, within the EPM stack, there's, you know, the traditional FR reports. I'm sure, you know, many of our um, administrative users uh, within this conference coming up, you've probably built, you know, many tabular FR reports. Um, and, and you know that there's data limitations within the FR reporting functionality. You really only are, are kind of, um, uh, you know, gated in to leveraging just a single EPM source. Whereas a tool like Power BI, and you can see here, Buzz is pointing it out. Um, Power BI has such great benefits of being able to combine disparate data um, sources together and then build really beautiful advanced visualizations off of that data, providing additional insights into your data within your organization that FR really doesn't be, uh, is not able to capture for you. So, you know, we wanted to just give that example of how, you know, the Power BI, um, you know, moving your data sets into a, a single layer like Power BI is really powerful and can help your organization um, thrive. A couple of things too about Oracle EPM structures um, and some of the challenges we've seen is, you know, how do I get um, some of this, this metadata out and, and how am I able to build my hierarchies kind of on the fly? Um, as you know, in, in working with the EPM tools, um, Oracle uh, leverages what's called a tree structure um, to be able to store their metadata. A couple things about um, why Oracle chooses to implement this is because the, um, the applications themselves, this is a really great fit because of the frequency of operations uh, that are flowing throughout the application and storing data, metadata in this way actually helps minimize a lot of memory and compute sort of limitations or overhead. So, you know, as you kind of go into a smart view and, and you want to drill down into your hierarchies, the power of storing data within a metadata structure with the Oracle application um, is, is very powerful. But some of the limitations here is that it's really hard to extrapolate into a, um, a business intelligence tool like a Power BI or a Tableau. Um, a couple other things to talk through here, you know, as you know, a tree um, a data structure is actually really great to, to hold hierarchical information. So that's another reason why, you know, you see throughout Oracle applications within their metadata and their dimensions, they store um, hierarchical information within a tree because this, this type of data structure is really powerful to be able to give users uh, flexibility to kind of build robust hierarchical data structures that support different types of their, uh, their business. So a couple of things about that. Um, we have a couple, we wanted to give you guys um, some common tree terminology, you know, as you're building the dimensions within an Oracle application, you know, you can see different things like the amount of depth, um, you know, if you look at a chart of accounts, you can have many different parent-child relationships within 
uh, within the tree. You know, there's different ways you can create tree structures and you can see here through labeling kind of what that looks like. Um, you also can see different effective dates. Um, sometimes you often see, um, you know, past, present or future kind of future looking forward hierarchical structures within that nature. Um, and then, you know, obviously, um, there's a lot of auditing behind those metadata structures, making sure that the data has a lot of integrity behind it. So, you know, we wanted to give this kind of out to you guys so you can see some common tree terminology and sort of how this differs from some more tabular data sets that you can come across in the wild. A um, couple of challenges here, you know, we wanted to provide you with some detail about kind of well, why is it so hard to uh, sort of represent tree-based data structures like the metadata is maintained in Oracle in business intelligence tools. And so oftentimes the way you see these tree-based structures stored is that it really only has the, the parent-child relationships within a record. And then you have to do a lot of recursive complex operations to sort of unravel it to get the tree representation you see here on the right. And so you can see here with this visual, it's um, it's a, a lot of execution of uh, recursive operations to basically create that full hierarchical tree. A lot of business intelligence tools really are not best served to handle this type of data. Uh, they really like um, a nice tabular clean um, table-based structure um, so that it, it's easier to pull those hierarchies uh, and blend it with other data sets. Um, whereas the Oracle EPM applications are really designed to provide um, just immediate quick access to intersections of data within something like a multi-dimensional model, like a cube. Um, and so it's really meant for pulling data on demand versus maintaining that data in a hierarchical manner in more of a table-based structure, which business intelligence tools love. So we wanted to give you just a little bit of an overview of kind of the challenges we've seen with some of these tree-based structures in business intelligence tools and what we were able to do to solve for it. Um, a couple other things too here, as you can see, um, you know, the business intelligence tools love, love reporting dimensional models. So they love, a, um, a conform dimensional style uh, dimension and fact structure you can see here on the right, uh, where you're storing things, you know, dimensions uh, in, a, in a very flat manner. Um, and then they join to measure tables like a fact table. It does, uh, BI tools typically do not like the tree-based hierarchies because of that recursion. Um, we do see that, you know, for some hierarchical structures, uh, Tree-based hierarchies can be implemented, but it does require a lot of additional um, complex um, what, you know, in, in Power BI, for example, in, uh, you need additional measures or DAX calculations, which can cause report latency. So um, you can see here kind of, you know, the, the benefits of being able to uh, recurse and pull out that hierarchy and land it into a more tabular format. So. Now that we've talked through that, you know, we wanted to go through how we've solved the problem for our clients and how you may be able to then build um, these tools within your organization and give great benefits and, and sort of so sh show, you know, different data blending capabilities and how that works. So a couple things with how we've solved for the extraction out of Oracle EPM products, especially as they're being cloud-based. Um, we've gone an approach of doing sort of a flat file batch process, whereas we, you know, ex extract the data from the Oracle EPM tools, and then we leverage out of the box data export features in EPM. Again, very easy, very standard, uh, very, you know, it doesn't require a ton of um, complex, um, you know, extractions. Um, and then we've pulled both the data and the metadata from the apps at the same time to ensure that the data has strong synchronicity. Um, we have, we've also enabled automation by leveraging things like PowerShell scripts to just perform these export tasks on a nightly basis, um, on a weekly basis. Um, 
So, you know, there's some good kind of tips and tricks that don't involve heavy API exploration. Um, you can just leverage what's out of the box within the application itself, land it in an environment to then be ingested into a downstream um, data uh, repository like a SQL Server, um, Oracle database, and so on. A couple other considerations that we recommend, especially if you're trying to blend it into more of a data warehouse style where you're combining all of these different measures um, and dimensions within a single kind of reporting model, we recommend like anything that you would ingest into a data warehouse is setting up a single storage area that basically allows you to just grab the, those flat file structures and then import it in. We've leveraged a bunch of ELT tools um, for these integrations. ODI is a great part of the Oracle stack that you can leverage. Informatica is another great one. And then one of the most important parts before you actually push it into your data model is isolating this data just as a raw staging layer so that in further down transformations when you load it into your data model, you'll be able to just have that nice um, clean kind of staging area um, to get the data set up before you process it. Another thing that we found that's really beneficial is leveraging additional competencies within your organization to ensure that the data that you're loading into a data warehouse style environment, you're partnering closely with SQL developers and DBAs. They really should be your best friend within your organization, making sure that you're really getting that kind of best in class partnership and um, working with these individuals to ensure that the data loads into these environments successfully. So just a couple good tips and tricks for how we've been able to handle it for our clients. Um, a couple of things you can see here, you can see that we've just loaded the uh, DAT files um, and you can see we've extracted your to date um, information. Um, we've leveraged and pulled um, you know metadata out for different kind of um, examples for this particular example it's for one of our government contractors uh, government contracting clients and you can see here that we've pulled project data uh, very detailed very nested hierarchical structures um, internal reporting groups cost pools and of course you know chart of accounts is a big one and then you can see in addition to that we've extracted the flat files uh, we've extracted the data itself um, out into dat files as well um, looking on the right here you can then you know this is just a sample job scheduler that we've leveraged within sql server a lot of our clients leverage sql server um, within their sort of um, data warehouse um, tool set and so you can see here kind of the order in which we've loaded things um, truncating staging environments uh, that we've discussed previously and then rerunning and loading these flat files into staging tables and then you can see kind of at the bottom here um, what we've been able to, uh, then we load it kind of into more of that conform dimensional model where you're really cleaning your, your, uh, your dimensional tables um, and adjusting for um, new records that come in. Just another example here, um, you know, talking through kind of an entity relationship um, or e entity relationship diagram or ERD for short, you can see here we're leveraging a crow's foot notation that gives you an example of how you can bring, you know, your different data sets together from both, you know, your Oracle EPM products and then, you know, potentially um, from, you know, an ERP tool. Um, you know, we've leveraged cost point as a big one with our government contractors. So you can see here, we're blending both uh, information from Oracle EPM, specifically uh, the planning, you can see DIM plan account here, DIM plan project, DIM reporting groups, all of that was exported directly from Oracle EPM. And then you can see other attributes that we've been able to extract from enterprise resource platforms like cost point. You have your DIM employee table, you have your DIM org, you have your DIM OBS structures, your, you know, your cost point project dimensions, 
um, and being able to bring all of that together into a single um, st uh, star schema based model is how we found has been really beneficial for um, drill through activities that you see in business intelligence tools cross filtering and so on so we wanted to give you a nice example you can take away and kind of see the cardinality between the dimensions and facts and how we've been able to bring oracle epm tools together um, to provide kind of that that additional enhanced um, data blending so lastly this is the area where we're going to talk about different data model patterns and so why is this important it's important because different uh, applications within your organization, especially for reporting, likes data formatted in a certain way. So to really break into your superhero skills, you need to make sure that you're transforming your data so that the applications, the reporting applications specifically that you select, um, really like the way your data lives or, or is staged. So we're going to talk through this a little bit. Um, Another really great tool, you know, before we go into the data itself and structuring it, we wanted to provide you just an overview of how we've been able to build a true enterprise operational model. Um, and you can see here the, the green arrows really talk about some of the power that you can get when you extract data from Oracle EPM and sort of where the areas of, we call it areas of enablement, can really be powerful here. So you can see kind of in the in the uh, blue box here where the EPM metadata and data structures live there. Um, you can push data into your environments um, and extract kind of plan and forecast data into a staging layer. And then you push it into a nice dimensional model that we've walked through here, which then can be consumed by things like um, Power BI, which you see here, and then of course the presentation layer, where you see um, you know different areas of the business benefiting from it, whether it be executive dashboards, ad hoc analysis. Um, Power BI has some great self-service analytics processing, and and they've recently deployed um, even better features to give the data um, kind of uh, flexibility for for uh, self-service. And then, of course, you know, you have your executive dashboards and, and your static reporting. So um, this is just a great visualization to kind of show you how you can blend the EPM data sets into a data warehouse um, staging environment that then can be pushed into tools like Power BI. Then lastly, this is kind of the, the secret sauce, if you will. So um, as you can see here and, and with most kind of metadata, that we've that we've been able to extract out of Oracle EPM, you know, they they have kind of that very tightly coupled parent-child relationship. So what oftentimes we recommend is leveraging things like um, pivoting, um, also leveraging tools like um, pre-level nodes, as you know, with tree-based structures, nodes are very important. So you can extrapolate on the nodes uh, within your data, and then you can build um, like a nice, clean, fat, flat um, structure here. So whereas before you would have kind of a, an, and you can see here, this is for a chart of account style data, you would have an account ID and a parent uh, within that metadata extraction. What we've been able to do is recursively pull out all of the levels assigned to an account ID so that then in your downstream processes and your downstream reporting, you can then filter off of a top level account, second level account, third level, and so on. And so this really brings a lot of power uh, in being, being able to recursively extrapolate the entire hierarchical structure into their own columns and Power BI and other business intelligence tools really love this. Um, they really enjoy having kind of the levels of your hierarchy maintained in their own columns that then you can filter um, and drill through accordingly. So just a couple tips and tricks you can kind of take away, um, you know, bringing through the, the code for um, you to be able to leverage for future use and, um, and enjoy. Okay, so, um, you know, there's obviously, um, you know, challenges and some suggestions that we've been able to kind of learn along the way with some of our implementations. Um, and there's always areas for improvement for anything that you build for a client. 
So we wanted to give you this slide that just talks about some of the um, some of the interesting kind of pitfalls or challenges we've experienced, and we wanted to bring it to your attention because you may see it out in the wild for your clients. Um, big things we see are things like shared members and alternate hierarchies. Uh, we've been able to address that by um, you know, leveraging kind of transformations within SQL to be able to truly identify the distinct parent-child relationship so you don't have duplicative data or you don't fall short and maybe break some of your hierarchies as you pull it out into those levels that we saw with the um, irrespective of their columns in, in, that, um, in the account metadata that I presented to you. Another thing we see too is depending on the account type, you can have different sign flips. So um, oftentimes how we've resolved that is we worked closely with the um, admins that support the EPM solutions to understand how Oracle treats sign flips uh, within some of their uh, metadata and their measures. And then you use, um, typically there's uh, additional attributes assigned to, for example, an account ID, um, different columns within the metadata that can denote how the, uh, the sign flips occur in downstream reporting that then you can leverage in things like DAX calculations um, or within the, um, the dimensional model directly. So that's something really helpful. Another thing that's been really helpful too is um, you have kind of extended dimensional attributes that you can simply add on to your dimensional table that you've extrapolated all of the uh, levels and you've made it a nice flat tabular structure. You can simply perform an update statement within you know, a SQL Server environment, or um, you can join that information directly into something like a Power Query. Um, so there's a lot of great features. You know, you're not limited to uh, kind of just the pulling out the hierarchy itself, but then you can enhance, um, you know, your attributes uh, within your dimensional table um, to support kind of further um, enhanced reporting downstream. Um, one thing we've noticed, and you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you use the AP, the REST API? There's a lot of great features within the REST API. You know, why, um, why have you not kind of uh, shown us that approach? It's absolutely a worthwhile approach. One thing that we found is there are record count limitations. Um, and also sometimes we face some network um, based sort of bottlenecking um, that, you know, obviously is involved when you're accessing cloud based data um, within a cloud based data environment. But um, you know, it's as easy, we found just kind of as a, a in terms of overhead, flat files work just as well. Uh, but there are certainly, um, you know, many ways to, to approach a problem. Um, you know, if you wanted to look at paginating and pulling out the data, that's certainly fine too. But we found just with some of our clients, you know, we, we kind of, we, we go the, the flat file approach um, just because it involves a little less overhead and development time. Um, and then of course, you know, your data management job orchestration, highly encourage you to leverage, um, you know, your, your enterprise style orchestration tools. Uh, there's a lot of great orchestration tools within Oracle EPM, as well as Power BI. Um, so, you know, you always want to, uh, you know, in terms of room for improvement, um, job scheduling is always a great one. So. Now within kind of the last 10 minutes or so of our um, demonstration here, we want to do a BI tool deep dive. And so Nick is going to help me a little bit, um, kind of talk through some of the business related value that we've been able to gain from this solution. Um, and so we're going to head directly over to the interactive uh, visualization that we've presented. So heading on over to Power BI, um, you can see here, this is our SCNH analytics dashboard. This is just a sample toy data set we've pulled out from some of our um, demo environments. Um, and this is what's called a Power BI app. So we've been able to curate a series of Power BI dashboards. And then you can see here where uh, for this particular data set, this is from um, Oracle's PBCS planning and budgeting cloud service. Um, and so you can see really cool stuff like actual to plan variants, um, you know, pulling the data out. I think another great thing too, especially with our, our government clients, is they have a ton of um, kind of deep dive um, 
hierarchical structures. So you can see here within this business unit area, um, we have kind of two levels here. This was maintained within Oracle metadata. And you can see here as we click through, um, this is really easy. The latency isn't there at all. It's wonderful, just a nice experience. Um, and we've been able to transform this just through um, some efforts that we've talked about earlier in the slide deck. So this is really powerful, like how speedy, it's almost like the same kind of feel in terms of data retrieval as something like um, you know, a smart view, but you see it presented in a beautiful visual manner. Um, you know, you can also see here uh, different areas that you can blend um, really quickly, being able to slice and dice your data. Um, and then you can sort of see here um, additional information that we've been able to hierarchically pull. Again, you know, depending on your organization, um, just really powerful uh, visualizations. You can also see here, um, I always like to give this plug, but uh, currency is a big one. Um, and you can kind of see we've been able to very quickly extract um, currencies, especially for um, our international clients. Um, you can see there's a lot of great power in just being able to apply a currency uh, filter. So you can go straight uh, between kind of your local or your USD currency in this example. Um, other great features, like we can head on over to some of these other great ones. Um, you can see here, we've been able to extrapolate um, actual data um, to plan. We've been able to do um, data blending. Um, between cost point in, in this particular example, this is this is a cost point toy data set, um, and then um, uh, planning data. Really, really cool, powerful stuff. Um, Nick, is there a couple, yeah, I'll, I'll try on a couple of oh, things, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. So these dashboards, you know, they, they sit within the client's kind of, you know, their, their Power BI application that sits right alongside their operational dashboards that go back to their ERP, uh, their CRM system for opportunities and kind of lives right right alongside it and gives access to folks that don't necessarily go into the, the Oracle EPM app on a daily basis. So it, it's helping them get access to the data that you know, is derived from the Oracle EPM solutions, but, you know, puts it at their fingertips. And some of the things that Lou is highlighting, you know, absolutely here, you know, which he's been able to do on the back end and kind of get this stuff in a, in a position where it can be easily reported. You know, we're seeing line items from the P&L here with revenue, TP is trading profit, and then their their highest cost categories we have here. That's what they look at on a month-to-month a month, month, to month basis to really make sure that they're trending appropriately and looking at the right co cost categories uh, in comparison to revenue and profit. Um, some of the other things too that you know, Lee's going to touch on is with these different slicers we have up here at the top, you know, it's almost like you have your FR report and you have your different kind of prompts that you can go about and make selections. We've, we've brought in the, the data sets that make sense that we're looking at and comparing against on these reports with actuals, LBEs, what they call forecasts, and then we have planned variances as well. So we kind of have all the pre-baked variance analysis that they want to see on the dashboard, but then we're able to augment that with um, on the far right hand side reporting group. That's actually a, an attribute dimension and it's a, it's a attribute dimension that actually has hierarchies in it. So for the purpose of this demo, we just deep branded it with a, a bunch of random characters in here. But that is like a way that in their Oracle EPM solution, they group a bunch of different projects together that they want to compare. Uh, it only exists in the Oracle EPM solution. So what Lee was able to do is extract that dimension and rebuild it just like any other dimension. So that relationship was there and they could e easily pivot and click and see how the different reporting groups function between their their business units so um, the concepts that she's she's talking about with your standard dimensions like entity or project or cost center you know those those certainly can be brought in and you can kind of create that hierarchy experience here in power bi but the same can go with, with attributes that often get added on to further kind of explain data in the epm solutions so attribute dimensions are, are obviously a, a candidate to get get funneled in here and help augment reporting as well yep um i think that's you know, all we, I really wanted to, to cover, I think you covered most of it, uh, kind of going down here, these are additional attributes too, just the different project types, whether it's a cost plus or a fixed price or TNM project, you know, whatever attributes you use to kind of slice and dice your, your main dimensions. Again, they can be brought in to kind of show that extra grain of detail along with, you know, currency slicers and things like that, that Lee is showing. Yep. Yep. One, uh, 
one good question that we had come in late that we can actually touch on now because you know it's kind of depicted in this this um, visual was around yeah. security, so data security and how that can be applied. Uh, the specific questions was, was what considerations are given to the staging area data security, especially when we are discussing planning data. Uh, so that's a that's a really good question, and I yeah. you know security kind of is on two different layers there. So the first is on the visualization layer. You know, just like you're accessing a report uh, from planning, we do leverage um, so basically security from the source system, uh, which flows to the Oracle EPM app. So we do have row level security in our dashboards. So if you're a user coming into the Power BI layer, you're only gonna see the business unit, in this case, the business unit of what you have access to um, and you know, down to the business area as well. So real level security can absolutely be applied on the, the dashboard layer. I think where this question is going is, you know, as this data passes through the, the underlying, um, the data warehouse or kind of the background you know, data environment, how can that be secured to make sure sensitive data is not getting out there as well? Um, there are a number of constraints that you, know, you typically want to have as far as like a data access approach of who can access it, um, and, and you know, making sure that they are able to see those data sets, especially when you get to like workforce planning style data, when you have employee salary or you know PII information in there. So those sorts of things, typically, people working in a data warehouse environment, there is you know certain certain rights that they have to see, uh, you know, sort those sorts of sensitive information. But it does need to be heavily kind of monitored, and who has controls to access that. And then one other technique that we've seen work as well is when you're building out a solution like this and you're leveraging a, a dev or a test environment, um, there is some techniques that can be applied to scramble the data. So maybe you have the right, the correct metadata and the data is flowing out, but you're either scrambling names, you're scrambling the data set, and you basically get your testing ironed out with that scrambled set of data. And then as it moves to production, you know, maybe only one or two people have access to do that migration, or it's a more automated migration approach that doesn't have the ability on the back end to get in and actually see what data exists in the production table. So yep. there's a few different considerations there. That's a great question. Um, so it is kind of two-tiered though, monitoring the back yep. end of where the data is stored, and then the front end report layer needs to you know, be be uh, in line with what is displayed in the Oracle EPM solutions. Yep, and especially for lower um, environments like your development and test environments, we highly recommend that data masking methodology that Nick's highlighting, where you create a process that basically masks the data um, as you push it down to uh, you know, your lower environments. And you do that kind of on a regular basis. Um, typically, we see organizations kind of refresh their lower environments um, on an ad hoc basis or um, you know, they they set up kind of a monthly schedule that then triggers that data masking process to push it into your lower environment. So there's a lot of great um, ways to kind of safeguard your production data and not expose, you know, especially those budget uh, style data elements. Cool. cool. Any other questions, Nick? I think this probably helps us. We can segue right into the, the Q&A section. Uh, we did have a question come in, so I did kind of cover that with the the attributes dimensions and whether or not they can be utilized um, in, the, in the visualizations. So we did cover that. Uh, and then I had a question around about how often um, do you you know kind of keep the your P Power BI environment in sync with your Oracle EPM application? So maybe you want to talk a little bit to that later around just you know how frequently like you know we load this stuff over. Yep, absolutely. So our clients typically um, that we've seen perform planning um, reviews on a monthly basis. Um, but if say you have a higher tempo of, of needing kind of that data at your fingertips, um, you can leverage nightly processes that can be scheduled within tools like a Power BI, um, tools like a SQL Server, um, but enabling that scheduling process to occur. Uh, if we head back over to the slide deck, you can kind of see um, if we head over here, uh, this is an example of, you know, extracting data um, using, you know, in, into an intermediary layer. You can uh, create kind of a scheduler. You can leverage things like Autosys. Um, that's kind of an enterprise style scheduler to, to orchestrate data throughout environments. 
um, trigger that on a nightly basis, trigger that on a weekly basis, however, you know, is, is important to your organization. Um, and then from there, um, kicking off something like a scheduled uh, a job tool within like SQL Server as an example, where then, you know, you can schedule it or you can have it trigger, um, you know, within kind of those larger data orchestration tools like, like AutoSys. Um, there's also great job scheduling functionality within Power BI that you can just set on a schedule um, and, uh, and then it can refresh your data as needed. So lots of flexibility, you know, again, depending on what the business case is um, and the expedition with which they need uh, data readily available at their fingertips. Um, another thing we see is, you know, we, we typically kick things off, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, around like in the middle of the night, that's a, a great time. We always try to make sure that business systems are operational and running smoothly as users have access to it. Um, and these processes really don't take that long um, to run. So we always recommend, you know, when you do your refreshes or considerations of that nature, always try to do it off business hours, as you know. So hopefully that answered your question. I think that that's everything that we've seen come through the chat. So I think, uh, I think we're good, Lee. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, everyone, you know, we're, we're finishing up a, a few minutes early, but um, we'll give you a few minutes back. Um, you know, again, here's our information. Um, should you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to share sort of the wisdom and, and pitfalls we've experienced to, to better enable you to become your um, data superhero in your organization. Lee and Nick. We greatly appreciate your presentation today. Great job. Um, everybody, I, as I said earlier, the recording will be available on the ODTUG website uh, later this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.